Anyway, Professor Texmex invites Rosemary for a chat. Supposedly to discuss Rosemary's yet to be decided focus for the everything hours. It's time to choose your discipline. You can't really deny your legacy. But I already have battle classes. Sure, those cover broad stroke stuff. What the shit? What do you mean they cover broad stroke stuff? I've said it multiple times, and I'll say it again. This is a school with the specific purpose of training warrior heroes to protect the realm. The trainees are literally called guardians. So what the show is saying is that this highly specialized school doesn't in fact teach their students sufficiently in their chosen field of combat, and instead the students have to train on their own, unsupervised. Then what the fuck is even the point of the academy in the first place? The whole idea behind teachers and schools is that there is someone actually teaching the kids. If the twerps are just gonna swat their swords around on their own anyway, then they can do it anywhere. Preferably someplace where none of them end up hacking their fellow men to pieces. To hell with this backwards ass piece of shit academy. This is pure insanity. Not a single school worth shit in existence works like this. No human works like this. No one can be this stupid. The writers have to be aliens. This is the only plausible explanation for this. Anyway, Rosemary ends up picking swordsmanship as her everything hours focus. Yay, who saw that one coming? In the end, all the main characters' picks for their focus are painfully obvious. The archer practices marksmanship, the mage does magic -y stuff, the blacksmith works at a forge, and the one with the sword trains in swordsmanship. And to be fair, these choices are indeed the only correct ones, but that begs the question of what even is the point of everything ours in the first place. The correct choice for everyone is to focus on their immediate field of expertise, so why doesn't the academy simply have proper classes each day in those fields? Fuck the pottery and the ballet. Train the kids how to handle their weapons. Going deeper than simply broad stroke stuff. It's quite different than facing the world with a terror sphere. Keep at it. Mm -hmm. The concept of everything ours has no bearing on the story. It should have been cut entirely. Introducing it is a complete waste of time. Time that could have been spent on fleshing out something actually important. Say like... What the fuck is... Guardian. We are three episodes in, and the show has yet to give any kind of proper parameters for what being a guardian actually means. I use terms such as warrior heroes to describe them, but that's me giving the show the benefit of the doubt. After all, their goals seem to be painted as righteous. The Guardian Oath, for example, is a list of vague virtues, bravery, self-sacrifice, stuff like that. So I can only assume that an all-encompassing Justice League approach is what they are going for? Mind the hypocrisies. In the show itself, it's never stated what the organization's specific goal is. Nor do we learn what kind of authority the Guardians have. Are they comparable to police? The military? Are they mercenaries? Do they work in the private sector? Or are they under the rule of the government? Whatever the fuck that is in this show. Seriously, we don't even know whether this land they live in is a kingdom, a republic, some kind of theocracy, or just a cluster of city-states. The world building is so bare bones that rapid street dogs are gnawing on it, desperately trying to find at least some sustenance. Alas, in vain. I'm saying the world building is shit. The only times we see guardians on official missions, it's always something as basic as getting rid of some random monster. We get a flashback about Caraway and Lavender on a quest together. They slay a manticore. Okay. And? Why did they do this? Was the creature attacking some remote village? 
did you need materials from it to create a complex and rare magical remedy? What were the stakes? What's the actual reason for any of this? We never get to know. There is no story here, no setup, and no payoff. No drama, no reason to give a damn. It's just empty spectacle. Except it doesn't even work as that, since the animation is as limp as ever, and the choreography is one enormous yawn. It's actually quite telling about the mental maturity of the writers. Oh no, there's no need to write an actual story. Just have these D&D rejects killing a few beasts. That's what fantasy is all about, right? The life of a guardian is like some filler side quest from a video game. So Rosemary has her focus, great, and Caraway fixes up her sword, fantastic. So what else do we get out of this exchange? Well, the show has some interesting revelations in store for us. Caraway tells Rosemary how he and her mom used to be the bestest of buddies back in the day. Which leads to some obvious questions, remaining unanswered, as is the style of this show. Questions like, why didn't Lavender ever mention Caraway to Rosemary? And how come Caraway never visited her closest friend after graduation? The lives of these two, their careers, and the future aspirations of Rosemary are so intertwined that I refuse to believe for a second that Rosemary wouldn't be aware of Caraway long before attending the academy. Her mother would have spoken about her supposed friend several times. Once again, the way all of this happens in the show is not how normal people act. This is just blatantly lazy writing, and the reason behind it is clear. The writers want all this information to be new to Rosemary, so that they have an excuse to tell it to the audience by proxy. It's the same thing as with Parsley having to explain how classes work to the rest of the girls, even though they should all be equally in the know. Moment to moment, this show is truly a marvel. The writers completely ignore basic information that would make the story and the world function properly. And at the same time, what little exposition they do give is dispensed in the most awkward, unrealistic manner possible. This is why you need to redraft your script. Everything in a story is connected. Dialogue, characters, motivations, world building, moment to moment narrative. All of this needs to mingle and flow naturally. Every story beat and spoken line of dialogue has to go through a simple checkup in the writer's mind. Does it make sense for my character to actually say and do this? Clumsy exposition is a surefire way to kill immersion. And if the writer gives a flying fuck, then errors like these are super easy to iron out and make more natural with the tiniest of tweaks. For example, instead of Caraway initiating the conversation about Lavender, have Rosemary reach out to him. Something like... Man, I bet mom never messed up like me back when you two were my age. All those times I listened to you two recite your adventures. Just makes me think... I'm just not sure I'll ever be half the guardian my mom was. Have it so that Rosemary already knows Caraway. Maybe he was a close family friend a long time ago. Perhaps Caraway used to visit Pebble and her dear friend from time to time. Maybe he stopped visiting since Lavender's disappearance. He might rationalize it as being too busy as a teacher, but deep down he knows that he's staying away to shield his own heart. Visiting Pebble without his best friend there would make everything too real. He would have to face the fact that his confidant is gone. It would be too painful to bear. Perhaps he feels guilty about not being there for Rosemary in her grief, and now tries to make up for the lost time by personally guiding her. You see, everything makes vastly more sense, and we end up with some actual characterization to boot. The writers can otherwise have the exact same conversation between these two and exposition all they want. Except... There is another, more sinister reason behind this entire scene.
No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Man, you've got so much cool stuff in here. Oh, is that a lizard? You are just like her. Who? The lizard? You're an idiot! You know my mom! Do you know where she is? Please, tell me everything about her. W were you close? Was she amazing? What did she smell like? Now you say another word and I swear to God I will dice you into a million little pieces and put those pieces in a box. A glass box that I will display. I'd like to thank everyone for sticking around and listening to these rants. All the comments and kudos are much appreciated. And if you haven't already, consider drop kicking the like button and subscribing for more. Most of the people watching these videos aren't subscribed, so... You know, the button is right there. It'll only take a second. And a very special thanks goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thank you to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you'd like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.